I noticed because I, I'm very bad with me being alone with my own thoughts at night. A lot of times if I'm just in a quiet oh, room fuck. without the TV on, like I'll just think too much to go to sleep. Yes. And, and it could be anything. It could be like, oh, there's a kind of a program I want to maybe work on tomorrow on the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it could be, hey, I wonder when I'll die. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that, so I like having the TV on yeah. just for that. Are you, are you good with your own thoughts just no, laying there in the I'm quiet? I'm no good. No? I try to, because, you know, you try something to get off the whatever the fuck you'd use to, <laughs> to quiet your mind. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whether it's booze or whatever the sure, fuck, pills, sure. whatever it is. But I try, so I try everybody at, at meditation, try that, you know. F to me, it worked the opposite. Like, I'm sitting in a room of people, they go, just close your eyes. They go, thoughts will happen. No fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Racing hellish thoughts, you know. <laughs> and then the guy's like, just let them go. I'm like, ah. And then you open your eyes, you look at some other fuckers right beside you. Yeah. And uh, I, I tried it three times. I could never get to any place of quiet. No, I need a lot of distractions. And I, I could still operate and work. Like, I could, yeah. I could make myself, uh, you know, go to sleep. Or if I'm working on a computer or something... Uh, I'm good with the TV on or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But I need you this need constant little distraction because if you're just left alone to your own devices, your Fuck. thoughts will turn horrid. I, tell you, I stumped a fucking psychiatrist once. <laughs> <laughs> I said to the guy, because I was fucking gambling all the time, shit, right? I had a gambling addiction. Uh, you know? I'm over it now, but shit. But he said... I uh, bet you're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> he almost chip. lost everything. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, Chipperson is very funny. <laughs> but he said, the psychiatrist, he said, you're using gambling, you're using, you know, you're, you're fixating on gambling in order to escape your real thoughts. You know? mm -hmm. And I said to him, isn't that why you do everything in life? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I stumped him. He had no answer. He was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he recovered and tried to make it. But isn't that why you do everything? Yes. So you're not sitting at home just thinking, thinking about what, what was what's your, uh, really going to happen to us, <laughs> where, where it all ends. <laughs> As I was writing this book over the past year and a half, I began noticing that some of the events and themes described within loved ones becoming ill, and how comedy gets us through our pain, which is kind of a theme of the book. We're coming true yet again. How crazy that I was basically living out many of my tragic moments from the book once more as I was writing it. I find it ironic, yet also sweetly poignant, that life goes in cycles. As the book went to press, I lost my loving mother at the age of 89, a beloved wife, mother, grandmother, aunt, and friend. She touched countless lives through the generations and will always be remembered. This is for you, Mom. Dolly Saget, 1925 to 2014. That's made up. She didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just cry. I don't want to. Be, you know, I did. I started to cry. You started, you were starting to cry. Yeah, and then my you mother. Went to the joke, that's the story which, of which how is I lost exactly my what mother. this book's all about. It is. You and start it, to cry and you go to a joke. You do because you don't want to let people into that. You have a lot of stuff that's happened in your life, and you don't want to. You and I have talked yeah, privately, yeah, and I've had some see, see, <laughs> see what you do. Don't bring up see? <laughs> but see, Bob was the first comedian that I ever saw perform uh, when I was a boy, live, and uh, I loved him. Uh, but one thing that bonds us as comedians is we're bitter and jealous and, and we hate everyone else that has any success. But <laughs> Bob, honestly, has never had an unkind word for anybody. And uh, I love him and I hope uh, everybody else does. So uh, I just want to say that. Thank you. So anyways, I'd just like to say I know that uh, Mr. Letterman is uh, 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 not for the mockish. And uh, he, has, uh, he has no truck for the sentimental. But if something is true, it is not sentimental. And I say in truth, I love you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Very funny, Norm, and thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Norm MacDonald, ladies and gentlemen.
That was very sweet, Norm. Good night, everybody. How'd you get it? How'd you get peace of mind out of the other shit? Well, when I was, I, um, when I was very, I, this is a weird thing that happened to me when I was young. Yeah. I don't know if this means anything. Let's but try I, it. I remember it, but it was a moment I had that was, uh, it wasn't religious or epinaphic or anything, but it, it transformed me to some degree is that I was always fucking so afraid of everything. And if I went to a store, I'd have to walk around forever before I could even face a, a person in the store to buy a pack of gum. I don't know why the fuck I was like this. Yeah. But anyways, when I was nine, um, there was a blind, we lived in rural Ontario and there was a blind um, friend of my dad's yeah. um, that I had to, he said, take him to the store. And I was like, what the fuck? Like I have to take this blind fucker <laughs> and I'm already shy and shit. So I'm taking him to the store and then the fucker wants me to explain everything, <laughs> describe everything to him. Yeah. So I'm like, there's a, some grass over here and now there's a lamppost and this guy's all happy. Oh, what about the lamppost? I mean, it's just a lamppost. Yeah. So it goes on and on, but some thing happened to me during, it sounds bizarre, but something happened to me where I was actually, instead of always looking inward, which I think I'd always done before that one time, I was looking outward anyways. Uh, while I was talking to him, I suddenly uh, had a sort of a hysteria. Like I was laughing. I started laughing and yeah. stuff. And um, I don't even know why I'm remembering this, but I started laughing about everything. And everything seemed like um, very, very funny to me. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of weeks later, I saw a homeless guy and he was talking about, he was, he was talking, he started talking to me. Yeah. And he was talking to me about John D. Rockefeller. He's like, I was at John D. Rockefeller's funeral. Yeah. And all this shit. Yeah. And I was laughing at him and shit. And then he started laughing. <laughs> and I was like, it's all fucking crazy shit. <laughs> like, it's, something came to me. Yeah. Where I, I started. And uh, so now I find everything funny except, like, fucking real serious. Like, I'm no fear of going on stage or anything about death and shit. Right. And so, uh, but the other thing I, but the problem with laughing is I, I will get, uh, it will build to a hysteria sometimes that I have to uh, uh, crank a couple of benzos to uh, oh, prevent yeah? a panic attack. Cause, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I can get you panic You can attacks. laugh yourself into an anxiety attack? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I start laughing and then it gets out of control, like his, his, hysterical. It's um, And I still have extreme sensitivity to um, to things. Like uh, I can... Uh, not not to norm not to life things yeah but, but to to like um, literature or art yeah. or something like that i have incredible sensitivity i kind of have to stay away from it like what's an example like a painting or a yeah fucking paintings like i don't know anything about art nothing at all really but i have had fucking experiences that have uh, been so hard on me like one time i was in new york and I, somebody dragged me to a fucking art museum which i hate art yeah and I was looking at this picture, this girl, and uh, I was like falling in love with her. She was so fucking beautiful, this fucking girl in this fucking picture. Yeah. And then uh, a guide was telling me the fucking thing was written, you know, drawn in the 16th century. Obviously, this lady was dead, long <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah. And here I am fucking in love with her. Yeah. And so I'm like, ah, fuck it. I, I was like so hard on me for so many days. <laughs> so I try not to. It sounds crazy, right? Not but, really. But, but I can be very... Uh, it sounds like that's a very good painting. It was an incredible <laughs> painting. <laughs> but like, I, you know, I, I, uh, it you would make me cry. I didn't cry at my dad's funeral, though. Like, real life stuff seems so prosaic to me that it never really touches me much. So you have a, a sensitivity towards... Well, I mean, that's what art's supposed to do on some level. I guess for people that, like me that can't access uh, feelings or something it gets me well yeah i mean i get that with uh yeah i can get that with television commercials sometimes if i'm not protecting myself oh you mean like where they really can manipulate well, yeah you. well you jerk me around but like i remember there was this i kid. can be manipulated without and know i'm being manipulated yeah yeah like some movies i'll just let it go yeah no, but like you know if my girlfriend's afraid afraid of something or needs some help i'm like i don't know what to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, maybe you should no. call a friend. I can't. I'm, maybe I'm, it's because we're we live in fantasy lives. Or something. I guess. I remember a kid when I was in uh, grade school. We read Old Yeller. 
Oh, you, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the dog gets then the, yeah, they got to put yeah, the yeah. dog down, right? That's a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, and this kid Jeff was just like you know sobbing uncontrollably as he read out loud, <laughs> and they had to take him to the nurse because he couldn't <laughs> pull it together. Oh my god! I, so that's Sten- a, they call it Stendhal syndrome. Is it? Is, oh, so is there a name for it? Well, there, there was apparently there was this guy uh, I guess named Stendhal or something, some 16th century guy, but he had an art museum that was so beautiful. I don't know if it's a- anecdotal, but uh, there was an art museum where people would come in and. And have nervous uh, breakdowns from the uh, beauty of the art. But that can go either way with you. It can be laughter or sadness. Yes, yeah, it's, it's mostly laughter. The sadness doesn't throw me into anxiety. Uh, the laughter. What's the feeling though? Like, you're, like at a joke, or you're with friends or something, and you just can't you can't get it out of your head how funny it is, and then you yeah. you get anxious because you can't stop laughing. Yeah, I, I guess it's that. <laughs> like I laugh a lot. Like uh, that's fucking great which, as a comic. Yeah, That's I've, a I've gift. Never, I tell you, I've never trusted people that don't laugh. Like I've worked on shows and you know shit sitcoms and stuff like that, where the motherfucker doesn't laugh. Yeah, he's the head writer. Yeah, and I'm like, you're not laughing at yeah. nothing. Yeah, and I don't. It's know. all math to him. Yeah, it's math. It's yeah. like haiku or some yeah. shit. And like the but the best guys I've met are the guys that are able to laugh and fucking you know 